Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome back to Art of Awakening. My name is Ona, and in this video, we're going to be looking at the energies of June 2023. And I'm going to take a little bit of a different approach this time. Rather than talking a lot about the astrology, we're going to, I'm just going to share the downloads I received when I started tuning into this coming month and some of the energy patterns that I was shown, uh, as well as what some things to look out for and maybe some things that we can do to help this month go really nice and smooth. Um, okay, so when I first tuned into the energies of June 2023 for this energy update, the first thing that they showed me was this kind of human figure here. That's what I saw in my mind's eye. And I just understood that I was to do like an energy scan. Now, this is a a modality that I use when I work with people. Um, and it's basically a look at all of the seven major chakras and see what comes up. It, it tells a lot about a person's energy profile at the moment, uh, what's going on with them energetically, strengths, challenges, that kind of thing. And so for this month of June 2023, I'm just looking at a snapshot of the collective energy and in, in terms of like energy centers and chakras. So we're looking at the collective body of humanity. And when I say collective, I'm not meaning that it's kind of so any kind of a hive mind. The collective is really an aggregate of all of us as individuals. So when keep that in mind as you watch this, because your particular energy or experience may not be exactly spot on, right? This is an aggregate or an average, um, but hopefully it will shed some light on some of the energetic trends that we may be seeing in June 2023 so that you can better understand what's going on. And, um, you know, and it may actually really resonate with you as well. So, uh, and I did this energy scan beforehand because sometimes I have to tune in and, and take some time at it. So um, I'll just kind of tell you what came forward and I'll probably get more downloads as we as we move through here. So starting with the crown and I'm just using um, Mr. Archangel Michael here as a, as a uh, proxy, but starting with the crown area. Um, first thing I saw was like this beautiful deep red color and it, it reminded me of grapes or pomegranates because it was like this multifaceted almost clusters and the phrase that came in was seeds of wisdom or seeds of understanding. Um, so it felt like definitely it felt like the energy was forming, uh, developing, ripening, or even coming to fruition. And so right off the bat, it feels like this month of June is going to be one that that may be really a beautiful one for just meditation or or opening oneself to seeds of wisdom for integrating. Okay, so whatever past experiences, especially the past few months have been really intense, a lot of intense astrological things happening, a lot of really intense energies coming into the earth plane. And so after this eclipse season that we've just come through, it feels like the energies of June are going to be a little lighter, which is appropriate, especially as we are moving into Gemini season. So there's this air energy. It's a little bit lighter, more flowy. And also it just feels like it's it's allowing space for some of the the jewels I think of pomegranate seeds as like little jewels jewels of wisdom to to just kind of take root and so that we can you know integrate what we've received and begin to allow those to start to grow or expand or take root in our in our psyches so like I said, it was a cluster, a lot of these, and, and I'm seeing that it could be a number of people, like a, a kind of a, a monad of people or a, a, a number of people on the planet maybe coming to a 
higher level of consciousness, um, you, you know, some awakenings. It could be a wave of awakenings happening here in June as we have this a little bit quieter period of time where, where we can be receptive to these energies. Um, for some, it may feel very ancestral, like that red color reminds me of the, the blood. So there could be some bloodline stuff coming up and it could be a great month to connect with the ancestors, with the ancestral line and any kind of, all, even some kind of star family if you have uh, star family connections as well. Okay, so moving down to the third eye, the first thing I just like got this really, really clear just understanding of looking inward or deep introspection. And it feels like, um, it, if you saw my May energies video, it, it, a lot of it was about uh, May being a really beautiful time to go within and to do some inner work. And this feels like a continuation of that, but a little bit lighter. Like May, the, especially early May, a lot of shadow work. I was hearing a lot of people talking about that or, you know, some really intense going deep. And it feels like in June, That'll be continuing, but lifting up higher, etherizing this, and and this could be um, some integration of these energies and being able to lift the lessons or lift up into a higher vibration in in, in June. Um, also, filtering through the air and ether elements, which are ones more of like mental understanding or or coming into a higher energetic vibration. So it you know, anything that you can do that helps you to open up to the ether, to access your intuition, um, journaling might be a really great um, sort of activity for this month. Of course, this is this, you know, month of Gemini, this sign of communication of kind of this air energy, a lot of things going on um, energetically in, in this month that can really facilitate tapping into those intuitive guidances or epiphanies. So journaling, artwork, I'm getting dance, all these things could be a really great kind of activities to do. I'm also getting images of, you know, people just going out into nature, running and playing, playing in the water, running through the woods, um, some freedom. So there's a lot of kind of free flowing feeling, allowing your body to move and flow and uh, uh, feel the energies with your body and allow your body to express. It feels like it could be really freeing and also to help to integrate these energies. Um, Okay, also a beautiful month for meditation, especially kind of stillness practices that allow these energies in, or I'm also getting Tai Chi, Qigong, anything like that that really moves in a flowing way. Um, could be really healing, especially. All right, so moving down into the throat chakra, and big word came in right away. The word was harmonizing. Okay, so again, it feels like it could be a period of integration and um, any energies that have come up for you in the last few months, uh, energies that may have been coming up for the collective, right? And it could be a good month for harmonizing those, right? Um, Gemini, again, is great communication sign. Um, so there's a huge potential this month for healing through reconciliation, through speaking one's truth, but especially hearing the truth as it comes forward and being heard, okay? So I'm just gonna intend to hold space and just asking for the angels of the angelic realm and our star family to please hold space for us in this beautiful month of June, 2023, to allow for voices to be heard, who that need to be heard, to allow for the truth to be spoken in a way that is, um, you know, respected and holding safe space for this to happen. Because when we can do that and hold space and really listen with unconditional love, that's really inviting a lot of healing to happen. So I think there's a lot of potential for healing uh, uh, anything associated with that throat chakra. 
and which of course is a, a beautiful chakra for manifestation okay so i think this could be a month that we could start to set the tone for healing moving forward around any kind of misunderstandings or untruths that have been you know you know express to start expressing truth and to start expressing the desire for healing and the desire for reconciliation the desire for harmonizing can be expressed here in this month and and sowing seeds for that moving forward okay so the next one we're going to look at the heart chakra and um what i felt rather than saw in the heart was this real pulse or rhythm and so the heart really is the heart of the matter this month and and actually for this whole juncture that we're in the heart is so so important um the word coherence of course coming forward um what I'm getting is, and especially in light of what came through for the throat, is that um, practicing heart coherence is going to be really vital. So bringing all communication through the heart, speaking from the heart, listening from the heart, um, there's going to be this huge potential for healing in this month. Um, next chakra, we're going to look at the solar plexus. Uh, the energy center and there I felt more of a withdrawing energy okay so one thing to look out for is the tendency to avoid conflict and sometimes that can be sort of this peacemaking desire to make peace but if we avoid conflict too much what it can really do is it kind of brings one out of the truth it, or it can right if we're if we're wanting to avoid conflict so much that we're willing to compromise who we are or what's important to us and that i mean i'll raise my hand i mean i've done that a lot in my life and and it's was the cause of a lot of um kind of unbalancing in my life right and so be wary of any any time that you're feeling like oh i don't want to even go there right and sometimes it's wise to stay out right if it's something that you know you really have to pick your battles because sometimes it is the right thing to kind of withdraw and just let especially if it's like really really um agitated energy and energy that is very polarized sometimes it is you know the best course of action to just stand back and let that run itself out you know and not really get involved but you have to discern when to take a stand and it's it can be really easy to just say oh you know that's okay i'm just gonna compromise um i can handle this or whatever and but if it's if it's something that's that's really compromising your own truth one has to at some point learn to speak up for oneself or to just you know not let things slide so this is especially um important at this point then to stay in the heart okay remember that aggression tends to come from fear and so when you approach potential conflict from the heart space right it has the power to disarm and defuse and harmonize right and to resolve conflict and the trick is to stay in the heart stay compassionate without being a doormat <laughs> okay and and there's an art to that and and it does take some practice but when when we start to learn how to do that then that is the basis the real basis for creating peace and healing in the world okay um, so just something to be aware of and look out for in June 2023 as we move with those energies. Okay, let's move down into the sacral chakra. Um, the phrase that came in was divide and conquer. So another thing to really watch for. Um, sacral, right now the sacral energy center, and I'm talking about the collective and, and kind of what's going on in the world right now. Um, it feels like it's the most vulnerable ener energy center at this time. And just feeling into the energy of it so keep in mind that the primary creative impulses of humanity and especially of the divine feminine for millennia was the sacral center so there's a lot of energy around this and a lot of trauma right that has built up around the sacral area right um now at this point in human evolution and especially in order to resolve and heal that trauma 
that center of focus of creative energy needs to shift up from the sacral to the heart, okay? And this is the lesson and the energy of like Mary Magdalene and Mother Mary is bringing that incredible creative force of the divine feminine up into the heart. And, and, and divine masculine as well, right? Um, so right now in the world, there's a lot of sacral chakra themed discussion and topics going on right now. Um, and much of the time, a lot of these are being put forward in very polarizing or divisive ways, right? Because it is bringing up a lot of trauma and a lot. And, and, and so one has to recognize, first of all, that even though it's uncomfortable, we have to bring up the trauma in order to heal it, right? But also remember that if we stay in that sacral chakra kind of um, energy without bringing in the heart, it's only going to uh, continue the trauma. It's going to recycle that trauma over and over and make it actually worse. So it's really, really important to bring heart energy into this, right? Because otherwise, there's there's a lot of emotional triggering being being set off right now, okay? And if we just stay in that sacral kind of um, energy, it'll keep setting off emotional triggers. And those emotionally triggering trauma-infused sacral chakra kind of uh, energies are being used right now. They're you being used to further polarize humanity, and they're also being used as a major distraction. A lot of the topics going on right now, the the, the headline kind of things that you may be seeing popping up in your your news headlines, your YouTube feed, they're really a major major distraction if we really look into it. So uh, come back to the heart. Anytime you start to feel emotionally triggered, come back to the heart, especially if it's around anything to do with sexuality or material gain or manifesting. If you're feeling any kind of triggering or kind of ups and downs, emotional excess, or even just kind of overly sexualized feelings, even if it's around like making money, right? You, you, you know what I'm saying? It's like those that, that kind of driving kind of energy. Be aware of it and bring it back to the heart. We always want to bring everything right now back into the heart and that will help to heal or cleanse or purify anything of that source sort, especially if you're running a business and wanting to manifest. Um, it's going to bring your 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 energy, center it back into the heart, bring yourself back into a state of divine service rather than you know, just, uh, uh, it's going to bring it up out of the lower chakras into heart and above that, that, that higher space, higher vibration. Okay. And so finally looking at the root energies, um, what I felt was a tightness or a tension at the root chakra. Okay. Uh, a sense of kind of like discomfort at, at being embodied even, right. Not even wanting to be here on the planet. Um, kind of unhealed trauma, I, I'm feeling a lot of that at the root, okay? And so again, let's just, if you, <laughs> if you want to with me, just take a few nice deep breaths right into the belly and relinquish and release any stored tension release it to your angels, right? We all have guardian angels and they have this direct um, connection with the, the divine. You can relinquish any kind of tension or negative energies to the angelic realm and ask them to bring it to the light, ask them to release it or assist you in releasing it, or you can release it to Mother Earth, right, and allow her to gently cleanse and recycle those energies. Um, and uh, just feel yourself just being held because we are here now, at this point in time, we are fully embodied on the earth, and it's time to start recognizing that, you know, we are a part of earth, and then from here, it, one has to really feel oneself fully embodied, know that you do belong here, we do belong here, we have a right to be here, to hold space, to be in our bodies, and it's only from being embodied and being really woven into the physical 
beingness of being on the planet it's only from there that we can bring and start to re-spiritualize right and um so just holding space for being in our bodies for being comfortable in our bodies and you know being here now right so if you're having a, a hard time being embodied anything that you can do again to ground yourself um, again seeing people kind of running into nature go barefoot um, breathing exercises yoga anything that will bring it to you into your body into a in, in a very healthy grounded way is going to help with all of this right um, so just to kind of sum up the energies of June 2023 and in terms of you know through this model of the human energy um, the, the human body as representing the human collective what I'm feeling is there's still a lot of kind of lower uh, chakra um, kind of lower energy centers feeling of unbalance or trauma the higher centers are actually feeling really good so I'm feeling like there's a lot of divine presence right now that those of us who are you know moving into this awakened state uh, can access there's a lot of divine support for us right now and it's going to be really important to bring everything into the heart to really uh, hold ourselves to the light uh, hold our hearts open and just re ask for the guidance the help especially in healing or bringing up any kind of trauma that has been lodged in these lower centers this is a beautiful month for healing and bringing more healing and more light into those lower centers for for grounding because it feels like it's it's going to be a month that it may be a little bit of a respite between <laughs> between intense you know periods of energy on the planet um so beautiful opportunity for healing for grounding for reconnecting and for going within and accessing deeper levels of divine wisdom and healing so that's it for june 2023 i will be doing another video on the summer solstice or the the june solstice of this year as well as watch for another spirit animal vi video coming up if you enjoyed this energy scan approach i do offer energy scan um uh, sessions for individuals i'll put the link to that below and always remember you were born to be free